We gather together tonight for a glorious celebration of the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ to be with the Father forever. And so let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we acknowledge today the incredible work of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, on Calvary, his death, his love, his sacrifice, and then his rising again on the third day to be with his disciples. And now, Lord, we celebrate that moment as he was taken up into heaven. And Lord, we pray that as we remember that and bring that to mind, so we will grow in our understanding of Jesus' work in our, in our own personal lives. Amen. So why do we cherish the Feast of the Ascension? Quite simply, very profoundly, it is the central doctrine of our faith. It really is quite central. The passage we read from Acts chapter 1 and verses 1 to 11 gives us a very clear account of how Christ was simply taken up, not simply, was taken up right before the very eyes of the disciples. And it sounds very fantastic as we read it every year and every time we read this portion of scripture, a little bit hard to believe for us humans who live here on earth and don't understand the things of God and the things eternal. But first you've got to believe Jesus rose from the grave, that he did. He defeated the very thing that afflicts all humanity, defeated death once and for all. Resurrection was his victory. When was the last time you've seen anyone rise from the dead and later, as it were, beamed up into the sky? Yet it is part of the Apostles' Creed that we repeat again and again that very ancient creedal statement from the early church dating back from the very early times in church history, a half a century or so from the last writings of the New Testament. And it's all there. Just to look at it again, we proclaim in that creed, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead and on the third day he rose again. Just as an aside, in the hubbub of Easter we sometimes forget Jesus stuck around for another 40 days after the resurrection. Apparently he had more to say to us then and, and he did. The very first verse in the book of Acts teaches us the Gospels were about all that Jesus began to do and teach. And so continuing in the creed, we then go on to the phrase, He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. The sixth component is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which we celebrate in 10 days time on Pentecost Sunday. And that's promised in verse 4 of our reading. The Ascension then is one of the six important components of our Christian faith and liturgical calendar for the year. It marks the exaltation of Jesus to his rightful place as God sharing the heavenly throne with his Father. Why then is that doctrine so critical to us? Firstly, we see that the Ascension of Jesus was visible and very physical. In other words, it was such that it could be witnessed by the people who were there. Verses 9 to 11 of our reading gives us a physical manifestation of this promised doctrine from Holy Scripture from the Old Testament. Our Gospel reading then also goes on to tell us of Jesus explaining why these things must happen. And then we read of the moment of the Ascension in the vicinity of Bethany where he blessed them and left them and was taken up to heaven. Very significant moment, just as it was important for Jesus to be seen following his resurrection, so it was necessary for him to be seen to be ascending into heaven. The visible ascension brought to an end the physical ministry of Christ, the earthly ministry of Christ. Had his appearances merely, merely ceased, or had Jesus merely vanished without a trace it would have been easy for the skeptics then and now to claim that the post-resurrection appearances 
and the consequential and the consequences of the res resurrection itself were mere fabrications. As it was, however, the unbelievers had yet another visible, tangible, physical event for which they could find no earthly explanation. So the doctrine critical of this for us because of three major points. Jesus promised his disciples firstly that he will be home with God. I will be in my Father's house. You remember that beautiful verse from John chapter 14 and verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me, he said to his disciples. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. It's all about the Father's house. His ascension means Jesus is serious about heaven as a place where you and I will feel at home. Heaven's going to be a place where there'll be a wow mo moment and a deep peace instead of war and pieces in this world. Jesus shared this promise just after he had predicted in a previous passage that Peter would betray him. And yet he said, don't let your hearts be troubled. He says to Peter, trust me, you'll get home. Just trust me. Don't let your feelings destroy your trust or undermine the reality of the home that is waiting for you, Peter, and for all of us through all the ages. Secondly, the doctrine of the ascension gives us the power of hope. I have a glorious inheritance, is what the ascension tells me. Ascension, ascension day of Christ tells us of God's power. Near the end of World War II, Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin were observing a profession of a, a procession rather of a tank division going past them. And as they watched, they also discussed the prospects of post-war Europe, what it would look like, we are told. And at one point it is said that Churchill made some comments about how he hoped the Pope would have a good influence in putting Europe back together in conversation. And Stalin leader leaned over to him and gestured toward the procession in front of them and cynically asked, really? How many divisions has the Pope got? You see, Stalin, like much of our world, could only conceive power in one way, in brute force, and the power of the barrel of the gun. That was the only power most people recognized and still recognize, one coming through violence. But the kingdom of God is nothing like the kingdoms of this world. He comes not through force and conquest, but in love and grace. His kingdom is about blessing and prosperity of spirit. His kingdom is about life lived in humility and servanthood and praise for the one who goes before us. So our lives need to consist mostly of quiet, humble acts of obedience. But taken together, they add up to a radical obedience to Jesus, our Lord and King. When people see that in our lives, they will be struck by the spiritual power of Jesus as they see his kingdom among us. Truly woe to us if we are such lukewarm, ho-hum Christians that we make it easier for people to believe Jesus is not Lord. But Ascension Day brings us hope to know we're not left without meaning or without purpose in life. We'll enjoy the inheritance that'll be so rich and so glorious. And so let me take you to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18, where Paul says and prays for you and me these words, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ 
when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. All those spiritual blessings are ours because of the work and the life of our Lord Jesus Christ and the promise that comes to us through the resurrection and today through the ascension. The ascension also speaks about, thirdly, the empire of God. I and you will bask in the joy of the glory of the Lord as we enter that empire. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 says this, The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And so the glory that we see in the life of Christ is the glory of God that we will see one day as we sit down also in, in, the, uh, in the majesty of heaven. God will rule forever. Picture of sitting at the right hand. It's a picture that speaks of authority and active rulership of God over his kingdom. And that kingdom, Jesus says, is amongst us. We who believe live the kingdom life today. We already have a taste of what is to come in heaven if we continue to be what Christ wants us to be in this life. Look again at the angels who were present at the ascension. And they asked a pretty good question of those who were left behind. Why are you looking toward heaven? And it's a question worth considering. The gospel is not just the good news that Jesus is going to prepare a place for us in heaven, but that his kingdom rule is amongst us in this life, here and now, right amongst us. We see Jesus in one another. Frequently, though, we are more concerned with heaven than, we, than with the present reality of the kingdom of God. But the kingdom is amongst us. And the church is the visible manifestation of that kingdom. And so it is on Ascension Day. For on this day, we are claiming that the church of Jesus Christ, you and me, here today, is the most important place here on earth. We are claiming that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are claiming that while rulers are powerful, they are nothing compared to King Jesus. For us who believe Jesus lives in the midst of the church, that belief must change us into a very distinctive community of grace and peace and love. Because Ascension Day is how we see things in a multitude of quiet ways, in and through our faithfulness to God and our imitation of Jesus, we conspire together to make visible the kingdom of God and the Lordship of Christ. We are the light of the world and the salt of the earth, as Jesus called us to be. So, in conclusion then, Ascension reminds me that God wants me. If you have wavered in your faith, Jesus will mediate for you. There is great hope. He has ascended. He has the Father's ears. He will speak for you. You and I are assured that through faith in Jesus Christ, we have eternal life. And so Paul was able to say in Ephesians, and I'm going to read this portion to you. It's, it's five or six verses. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 through to 23. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet 
and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. And so in ascending into heaven, Jesus fulfills all the promises of the Old Testament and is seated together within the kingdom of God to rule and reign for all eternity. Because of his life here on earth, he has drawn together you and me, the church of God throughout the world. And he has empowered us and equipped us through the power of the Holy Spirit that we'll talk more about in 10 days time. He has empowered us, equipped us with the power of the Holy Spirit to be the kingdom of God here on earth, for the kingdom is amongst us. And so we have so much to give thanks to God for on this very special day. And so let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you came with the promise that you bring light and love. In your teaching and in your life amongst us here on earth, we learnt what it means to be light and love to the world. Lord Jesus, in your ascension, you promise to draw us to be with you in heaven. We thank you, Lord, for the hope, the eternal hope of glory that is ours, that we too will see the face of God and rejoice in the presence of the kingdom, a place prepared for us, Lord Jesus, by you through your promises. And so, Lord, help us in this age to live our lives in a way that will draw others nearer to you, that they too may have the opportunity through faith to reach the glorious kingdom of eternal life. Amen. <music>